Welcome to episode 167 of the Crafty Boys, because that's how awesome we are. <laughs> and apparently you guys are incredibly uh, disappointed that we didn't start five minutes ago. So you know what? Hey, whatever you can do. Uh, welcome. Uh, hi, guys. How's it going? And we have a special guest tonight uh, who's here only when she's far away. That's right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> she she had to go the other to the other side of the planet <laughs> to become a guest. Thanks, yes. guys. Thank you very much. You're so welcome. <laughs> um, right. And of course, as always, Faith the Pug is very <gasps> disappointed that she's on my lap because she's not that comfy. But she will either do that or sit under my chair. So. Take your pick, dog. Uh, this week, I got to pick the beer because I'm awesome. Hey. And I picked it uh, a little, a few days back. And apparently, we actually have had this beer before. Uh, <laughs> but, but, but. You've been practicing, haven't you? Um, Alan. Uh, we had it because uh, Alan used it on the ice cream episode from like episode 100 and what did I say? 46, I think. 146 that we did on June the 6th. Yes. And it was the Whoa. one where we did beer floats. Uh, so, you know, because it was coming up to summertime and that's, uh, that's what you do during the summer. So, uh, yeah, that is the excitement for the day. And the beer, of course, is Hoynes Brewing. Finnegan's Irish Stout, and of course, if you ever I don't have that. Oh, oh, sorry. What are you presenting to the class today? Kelly Brothers Sparkling Cider. From is where's Kelly Brothers from? Uh, Wonga Park. So I'm Kelly gonna, Brothers. I'm gonna guess that's in Australia. I, I think so. Yeah. It says, right. "Please drink responsibly." Probably As brewed in like a kangaroo's pouch or something. Possibly. So they are currently, apparently they're closed. What time is it there? How could they be closed already? It's a hundred percent pure apple cider. I wonder what else you would put in if it wasn't supposed to be a hundred percent pure apple cider. I'm opening this now. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Kelly Brothers. That's not the right Kelly Brothers. There's more than one. Kellybrothers.com.au. Add the Australian. Ending. We'll just again. Help if I actually, yeah, there we go. So I am. Um, it looks like this. It's cute. It is very cute. Uh, they are located in uh, somewhere uh, that, of course, doesn't it's, tell you in anything. Victoria. We're very happy. Uh, yeah. Where the hell are they? Well, I mean, they're Australian, but where's, where's the brewery? Whatever. Who cares? Holy. I am now opening the yeah, Open your stout. Is that good or bad, Allie? Mm. It's a little sweet. It's sweeter than I thought it would be. Mm. Now, this tastes like a taste. This smells like a stout. Um, the only difference is I'm kind of curious if the if it tastes like a stout, because I always associate Irish stouts as being dry. Not well, that they have to be, but. I'm just kind of curious. Uh, the the sniff tester, it actually smells a little bit sweeter than a, a regular stout would. Yeah. What about you, Dave? Are you drinking this or are you just hanging out? I've I've got it here. You've over foamed. To... Yeah. Over foamed. Holy crap, man. <laughs> yes. I I put I, I want to see a mustache poorly. on that thing. Ambitious, ambitious Dave. See that mustache? Yeah. Come on, make it happen. Uh, I can, Dave, no, Dave, Dave. nothing. Oh my lord! <laughs> so right, overall, so far, stick. so far and this beer, there's no lacing. Mine has a decent amount of lacing. You can't really tell. Since yeah, this glass the, the head, the head disappeared weird. fairly quickly. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I started off with a nice, say, you know, one to two fingers of foam. Uh, it's not really sticking to the size of the glass very well. But that doesn't necessarily mean anything. The beer is very good tasting. Now, <clears throat> I do want to point out that um, 
the Finnegan's is usually something that they put out in the fall. Uh, they made this batch in the sp in late spring, early summer. This batch and actually summer marketed summer? it with a, a float. Mm. Um, so that and, that, and that's why I selected this particular one for our float episode on June the 6th. Um, <laughs> and you guys couldn't find it, obviously, because I think it would just come out at that time. So, um, so now I'm it seems to interested to hear about what you guys have to say about it because I really like the back. Um, by the way, just for the interest of myself and probably nobody else, uh, the the uh cider that you're drinking, Allison, mm -hmm. uh, is actually a brand from a either a partnership or a family owned side business, uh, from the Kelly Book Kelly Brook Winery. Uh, which is, um, looks like it's about, uh, I don't know, 30 kilometers, 40 kilometers, uh, sort of northeast of uh, Melbourne. It is in the Yarra Valley, it says. Yep, exactly. It's right, th I can, there. It's it's on my other screen. It's right there. <laughs> um, so right, close to you. Out. I'm so close to where you guys are. Only 16 hours by plane. And you could be here near the Yarra Valley <laughs> drinking yes. Kelly Brothers cider. Yes, I keep track of what time it is where Allison is at all at all hours uh, by going to uh, time.is slash Melbourne, which is, by the way, if you want to know where someone is, or what time it is anywhere on the planet, that's the best website ever. Because um, not only does it tell you where, but it also tells you times for like Vancouver, Toronto, New York, London, Paris, Moscow, Beijing. So you have a really good idea of uh, uh, when, uh, where people are, or when people are. So it's now yeah. tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon for Alex. Yeah, yeah, it's tomorrow afternoon. I don't know what's wrong with you guys. It's totally tomorrow afternoon. I know. <laughs> uh, apparently, our travels around this gravity well that we live on, uh, sadly, uh, are not as fast as you. So just there you go. Uh, so overall, I give the Hoyne Brewings Finnegan's Irish Stout a thumbs up. I think that. Uh, it is really dark. It is really tasty. Um, it's sweeter than you would expect for an Irish stout, but that doesn't yeah. mean that it's a bad thing. It, it, it tastes really good. What do you when think you of had, Dave? I was hoping it would be a little bit drier, like a little bit more of sort of a palate uh, mm -hmm. kind of feeling. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Dave? Um, Dave I'm looks thumbing hammered. It. I'm thumbing it. Totally. You're thumbing it? I mean, uh, up or down? Uh, both up. This is what I picture Dave doing when he's talking about I'm thumbing it. <laughs> well, I was kind of thinking the same thing, but the thumb was somewhere else. I'm all alone right wow, now. Wow, it's yeah, so fun. Colonics. But anyway, beer colonics. That's <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, Alan has submitted a few stories this week. Um, and uh, the first story that we should really talk about, which is incredibly important, is the Vancouver Craft Beer Week Festival is offering $10 tickets to the 2019 festival. Alan, explain what this means to people like us who should be going, and also okay, well, the, people the, like the, Dave who don't bother to go. Yes. So the Vancouver Craft uh, Beer Week uh, takes place on uh uh, June 8th and 9th at the PE Fairgrounds. Uh, for their 2019 uh, year, which is going to be their 10th anniversary, for the first 100 tickets they sell every day, those tickets will just be $10. On, uh, what is it here? Uh, um, once that they have sold out, remaining single day tickets will sell for $29 until December 31st and then raising to the regular price of $39 after that date. So, and this starts tomorrow at noon. So that's Thursday, uh, November 22nd. Uh, also for sale tomorrow will be full weekend passes, $45 until uh, December 31st, $65 thereafter, and VIP tickets, which are $85 for a single day or $140 for the whole weekend that include expedited okay. entry access to private VIP area, food, drink tokens, and more. I have a problem with beer festivals because according to Julian, all beer festivals are is they used to be fun because they used to pour all the beer you wanted. 
now they aren't fun anymore because you have to use tokens and cost too much and whatever. Our beer it's festivals brilliant. really. It's basically, <laughs> basically, um, well, uh, sorry, what was it? Uh, who's our beer, beer I, festival's really in fun. Our, our building, he is our uh, beer yoga. Uh, oh. Yo Yoda, yoga. He our beer Yoda. Um, but essentially, I mean, the, his argument is that beer festivals used to be a place where breweries went to advertise their product and they would give away free beer for people like a to trade show, try them out. Um, exactly. Um, but unfortunately, beer festivals went in like most other trade show type sort of events. Uh, and basically have said that, you know, you have to pay for the privilege of being here. Um, and well, it's also liquor here. laws. And so, uh, but you know, it used to be a, a better deal, apparently. Now, here's the thing. I'm going to put the camera on Dave for a sec. Hey, Dave, <laughs> there's a, uh, yeah, there's a yes. beer fest happening in June of next year. Is uh, tickets are 10 bucks. Uh, you might you know, still have a girlfriend in Vancouver then. At the I, I so weirder things have happened, that people. Actually, weirder things have happened. Get you here. What? Sorry, what would you Will have that to actually do? Get you here. Is that what we had to do? Is get you laid so that you would actually show up? <laughs> I mean, that's really my question, dude. You want to come visit your girlfriend and go to a, a beer festival? Maybe she want to come hmm. to the beer festival. Yeah. <laughs> Or not? Hard to know. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> Wait, oh, I think that... we're putting him on the spot here. We're just it's gonna so shove fun. that off to the side, shall we? Are we? It... No. Hey, you know, you never know. You never know. Okay. Weirder things have happened. That Is I... that a yes? Could that... possibly. Wow! Wow! Well, I... if you want the ten dollar tickets, then you better decide fast, man. <laughs> well, and and I am not sure it would be her thing. She's not really a beer girl. She's more a uh, bit more of a wine girl. It's so sad, Dave. You had to pick someone who didn't like beer. <laughs> That's it. She's off the list. Um, I'll, I'll tell her. <laughs> so the next um, <laughs> the next uh, story that Alan has provided uh, hey, Alan. is is something that I know I actually read about uh, earlier today. I just scared the dog with a beer cap. I'm sorry. It's okay. Life is okay. You didn't get. You didn't die. Um, and Alan, I'll let you announce it because I was excited because uh, you know if they're doing it, then we have to see them. Yeah. I hope they tour. Like, I, uh, go ahead. It doesn't sound like it, but anyway, uh, to celebrate the 31st anniversary of the release of This Is Spinal Tap, <gasps> which is a mockumentary that was created by Rob Reiner and Christopher Guest and uh, a classic bunch of other guys uh, in 1984, uh, are going to be putting on a special live performance uh, in 2019. Now they haven't released a lot of information about it. It kind of sounded like at first they were going to do a tour and then no, it kind of sounds like they're just going to do a one time show, uh, probably in New York or something like that. And, uh, maybe it'll be televised. At least they'll take video of it. Um, I, don't know, I was kind of excited about it. I was looking forward to a tour, but I don't think that's going to happen. My guess is they would record the thing for sure. Yeah, I would, I would hope how, so. How could you not? Yeah, right. But how could you not? And I think that'd be freaking awesome. It's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. Got these sixty-year-old metalheads still going at it, right? It's. I think that's a lovely premise to start with. And who doesn't want to see Tap? Come on. Oh, I, I, I would love to see Tap. It kind of reminds me. I didn't actually see Tap, but I went with Shane to a show with those three guys, Michael McKean, Christopher Guest, and uh, Harry Shearer, and they were themselves. And mm. what they did, they did their songs from Tap and also uh, from A Mighty Wind, mm. um, just it, it, as acoustic things, just as themselves. Oh, I remember you guys doing that. Yeah, that was mm -hmm. one of those. And that was really entertaining. It was actually, it was called um, Unwigged and Unplugged. Yes, that's what it was. Mm. And it was quite fun. We saw it at the uh, Ford Center, I think. Uh, it was it was it was fun because they we Vancouver has become the launch for a lot of tours uh, for big bands. For some reason, they start here. I'm not sure why. 
Geography? Uh, probably. <laughs> um, Easy crap. But anyway, so basically they uh, they come here. They, this is their sort of their first show. So um, I recall that they did say at the very beginning that they were a little nervous because they hadn't done it yet. Yeah. Really. They rehearsed but not really performed in front of people. So um, it was kind of fun to watch because they as the night went on, they got more comfortable and which is kind of weird for that kind of crew. You kind of expect them to really, you know, fall into, you know, what they have done before. Yeah. But, um, you know, but here's the best thing about the this tour is that um, it's it not brought, a tour. Sorry, to this event, uh, hopefully a tour um, was uh, in the sidebar of the article when I saw it earlier, uh, just before we went on, um, it revealed there's a YouTube channel called Derek Smalls. Yeah, I was just noticing <laughs> that. Yeah. Um, and I've had it on the on the other screen here for a moment and or just since we started. And the uh it's, And you're it's never kind of, taking it off, right? It's, it's cut, well, I'm subscribed of the 1300 yeah, people who have subscribed. I'm now one of them. Uh, -huh. uh which is hilarious because that it's it's Harry Shearer doing, you know, something bizarre. Uh never heard about this before. Have very it's it's like he puts on a wig and I guess pretends to be the character. I haven't watched any of the videos yet, but of course, uh, I've once you will. We should check it out. Um, there's only about four videos, I think. Um, but uh, if you read the uh, the actual <laughs> the description on the on the YouTube channel, uh, you will not be disappointed. <laughs> um, so there you go. Um, <laughs> I can't stop reading it. I need to change the uh, the screen there. Change it. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, um, you know, here's the thing about uh, you know, quote unquote, fictional bands. Um, I mean, they had a uh, was it 1992 when uh, Break Like the Wind came out? I believe so. Yeah. And they did a, a, a tour-ish kind of thing. I don't remember if it was like a full-on tour or not, but I recall they showed up at different places. Yeah. And uh, one of those performances was at some performance that I don't remember what it was, but it was in Wembley Stadium. And mm -hmm. I remember sort of uh, being addicted to watching that. And I'm sure it's on YouTube. I haven't looked for it, but... Um, it was, it was some fundraiser or something. I don't recall, but it was it looked, it was amazing. I remember it being wowed um, because they did mm. uh, a bunch of tunes from the, that album. And then of course stuff from the film. Um, have you guys actually listened to their third album, which came out <clears throat> what, five years ago or so? You know, I'm going to be honest here. I'm going to say that I didn't even know the third album came out. Oh, really? <clears throat> yeah. Alan. Yeah, wow. I had no idea. You're, until I you're read not a real fan, man. Yesterday, you're not, a not a real fan. Um, the album, of course, is. Uh, I'm just, I'm just gonna bring it up here. It's hard to type with uh, dog on you. Dog, who's very kind of grumpy about life. Um, yeah. So the album came out in 2009, so 10 years ago, um, and it was called "Back from the Dead," and hmm. they did a bunch of uh, a bunch of different songs from the film but in different uh, versions. So they did uh, one funky, like a funk version of Sex Farm and uh, a reggae <laughs> style of Listen to the Flower People. Um, and of course, they did a bunch of other ones too, which they uh, did new versions of like Hellhole, Big Bottom and, and those kinds of things. And they added, I think, a couple of songs uh, from that were on, that were album titles for the movie but they didn't actually have music for them so they've released a couple of those but i can't believe that was 2009 because to me that feels like it was only a couple of weeks ago <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so uh, back from the dead 2009 spinal tap uh check it out because it was, it was quite good especially the funky version of of sex farm because right. uh, i always remember working on a sex farm dude uh, you always her. remember or you always sing well, I always okay. Well, damn it, yeah. you're here and you're revealing all the secrets. Um, Sorry, man. So yeah, but it's quite it's quite cool, and I and I do recommend it. Cups and cakes, cups and anyway. Um, so is Spinal Tap the best fake band ever? Yes. 
Yes, um, I think oh, well, so. For metal, yeah, definitely. How many? Metal. How many fake bands are there, really? Right. Okay. Well, there's there's them. Uh, there mm -hmm. is the commitments. Oh, don't like the commitments. What? 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 She's lying. <laughs> love the commitments. They're so great. Gosh, I love being on the other side of the planet from you guys. <laughs> when I say things that piss you off. <laughs> Continue commitments. Got you, it. You, you know what? The commit this ride, Sal uh, Mustang Sally from the commitments that that uh, year that it came out, that was a really popular song. I mean, it received um, a lot of radio play, it was everywhere because it, yeah, uh, it was great. Yeah, it was great. I, I would like to just briefly point out that was not an original. No, it's not. no, uh, all, no. Most, I think, all of the songs, maybe the I don't think there was an original song, I think they were all covers no, of different, things. not, yeah. not at all. Um, but, uh, but of course, there was a lot of from a mighty wind. Uh, all of the bands in it were fake. Yeah, true. Okay, fair. Um, um, I don't remember any of the band names, so it's funny you mention that because <laughs> I'm actually looking it up. Uh, the bands in the mockumentary, uh, of course, the three that we saw play on stage were called mm -hmm. the Folksmen. Uh, oh, hi. How are you? What are you doing? This is very distracting to have a dog not on the couch with Allison when I'm doing the show. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I know life sucks when she's not around. And then, of course, from uh, uh, a band that I'm kind of into, it really plays uh, kind of music that I like, and I really wish it was a real band, but from Scott Pilgrim, uh, uh, versus the world, sex bomb. Oh. Uh, oh. I would love if they were a real band. And I know that the music was done by Beck. Okay, but nevertheless, but it doesn't sound exactly like Beck. You know what? Uh, what? Uh, what's wrong with Beck? Nothing's Nothing. wrong with Beck. But he just wasn't a real bomb. band. Sex Ball Bomb is a phony band, but they sound so good for a phony band. Hmm. Like if you if you look up if you look up the YouTube video for uh, uh, Summertime by Sex Ball Bomb, uh, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's. I mean, the video, eh, the the song itself is is amazing. I love it. I have. Yeah. A, a sad thing to report this week in not exactly not exactly bands but people I didn't go see um, Ken Ken Jung from Community was playing in Melbourne oh. <laughs> and I was standing in line going please give me a cheap $30 ticket and I got there and it wasn't on it wasn't on the super good sale it was only opera and I don't know, some kind of soundtrack to No Country for Old Men by a punk band. So, yeah. yeah. Tickets weren't available at the price I wanted to pay. Uh, mm. But Shane says I should have gone anyway and then I missed my chance. So, he would be pretty cool to see. He would have been fun. Apparently, it's his first tour to Australia and apparently it was kind of a big deal somehow. But uh, I was okay, totally okay. freezing because I'd walked there and I got caught in this Melbourne downpour. I was so wet that my jean, all my jeans were wet. All my, my jean jacket was wet front and back. Ooh. And at a certain point I was like, you know, maybe I, maybe I just want to go home and have a, and then warm up. So, mm. but it, I am a little sad that I wasn't, you know, with it. Yeah. And, uh, the bands in a mighty wind. I found a website called fakebands.com. Mm. Well, there the you go. See, that's useful. Rocklopedia fake bandica. Uh, but from mighty wind, there was Mitch Cohen, the Folksman, Jack and Judy, which I do remember, the Clapper family, Mitch and Mickey, uh, the Main Street Singers, the new Main Street Singers, <laughs> Ramblin' Sandy Pitnick. The two Bedores and the Village Folk Ensemble. And, and, the, and here's the strange thing. Saw the movie in the theater. I don't think I've seen it since. 
Uh, I might, might be, but I don't recall. Um, I actually can picture these bands already. I have an well, idea. The, the Main Street Singers and the new Main Street Singers, totally. I picture them in my head. I think exactly. that, was, that was Parker Posey was uh, one, yeah. in one of them. Hmm. Yeah. And Mitch and so, Mickey was... Uh, was uh, 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 oh, is that Levy and O'Hara? Levy and, and O'Hara. Catherine O'Hara. Um, yeah, that's kind of awesome. And I think they actually had a song that didn't it get played at like the Oscars or something. Um, I, I seem to recall the Mitch and Mickey. Uh, I've forgotten the the song that was in the film, but uh, I do recall that I think it actually got nominated or was it the Grammys? I don't remember. But they mm. actually performed. That was a the thing. They actually went on stage and performed it. So, mm. um, seems like those two really like working together. Well, they've been working together for 500 years. I mean, <laughs> that's maybe, maybe a long time. going on there. I mean, yeah, the, the, consider, uh, consider where they come from, right? No, well, the SCP and I know right, there so. was there was not just, from what I understand, a little bit of friction in the cast of SCTV. There was a lot of friction. Yeah. Well, how do you know this, Dave, considering you've so lately come to getting friction yourself? Oh. <laughs> hey, that's well, that's, that's, get that guy some calamine lotion. <laughs> Let's keep this above the belt, girl. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa. Hey, Whoa. Safe, I'm half a world away. Whoa. You can't do nothing to me. <laughs> yeah, you just wait till you get home, girl. Oh, damn it. Uh, <laughs> you, know? you cannot stay away forever. <laughs> you know Stealing our thunder, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> and here I am trying to drink beer with pug hair in my mouth. Hey, these things happen. I hear. So no, here's my point. Everything was not cool. Everything was not cool. I know um, this. Okay, but be specific From as to interviews. On, like in the production <clears throat> of one of these films, or we're talking about, you know, back in the 70s, 80s. No, it's the 70s, 80s when they were doing SCTV. Apparently there was some issues. I think a lot of it revolved around the play the ladies were getting, the roles, you know, treatment of them, this kind of thing. Um, I read um, I read Dave Thomas's book about SCTV um, mm. quite a number of years ago, and his account, I mean, and, and granted he's a male and all that, and I don't think he was involved with it throughout the entire run, um, but his account of it was it was very sort of freeing and, and liberating. They didn't have, um, you know, executives and everything dictating to them what to do. They were given carte blanche to basically do whatever they wanted with wow. the time they had available, which is something it was it was rare for back then. It would be absolutely impossible to do now. Hmm. Hmm. So that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Well, and hey, um, I could be off the mark on that. On the friction thing. On the friction thing. Yeah. Well, you never know. I mean, you know, if the women, <laughs> if up, the girl. female cast members <laughs> felt a certain Try. way, then, you know, I mean, yeah. that may not be reflected in a book written by Dave Thomas. Yeah, very True. True. And who knows, maybe at the time, the it's ladies scary. were feeling like, I got to, you know, I got to keep my mouth shut. I want this job, all this kind of stuff, right? And the atmosphere, as we know, wouldn't have necessarily been conducive to saying, uh, yeah, hi, lady over here. I'm feeling a little kind of jerked around a bit, if you will. But, you know, I, I think the women had a lot of very memorable roles. Oh, particularly. Damn Particularly um, Andrea Martin. I mean, Edith Prickley. Oh. I mean, oh, yeah. she's like one of the most memorable characters from SCTV. Fully. Fully. Hmm. Yeah. And then and then Catherine O'Hara played that Lola character. Mm -hmm. Lola Hetherington. Oh, yeah, yeah. Throw yeah. Down. And yeah, I mean, she was kind of like, you know, that prototypical ditzy kind of blonde uh you know, like a, a ginger kind of character from uh, uh, Gilligan's Island kind of thing. Uh, but you know what? She played the character well, and it was a very, it was a very um, um, bold character for mm. SCTV. 
Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. Well, okay, so let's fast forward to more or less today. Have you checked out Shit's Creek yet? No. Yeah. Well, I've checked it out a little bit. Right. So it didn't grab you. It's it's not that it didn't grab me. It's that I just frankly don't have time to sit down and watch it. So Yeah, right. That's fair. I think you would time dig to it. drink beer. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I recall um I, you lost me at beer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't recall anything now. now. You should shut this down pretty soon if all when yeah, beer no, uh, is uh, yeah, well, that's, yeah. uh, partially one of my pausing because I actually looked at the timer and we are we're at time, boys. So um and lady. And, yeah. and lady. Thank, thanks. Thanks, Dave. Man, this is called the Gravity Boys. Now we got a girl here with that <laughs> going on. <laughs> How many fingers am I holding up um, from around the world? Two. I think two. At no, least. I'm, oh, I'm feeling that from the <laughs> From uh, Melbourne, uh, yeah. All, all the way, way from, from Melbourne. Melbourne. The fingers heard around the world. <laughs> <laughs> Those were for Shane, by the way. <laughs> Just, you know. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. you. No. All right. You're welcome. Good to know. But anyway, well, uh, thank you everyone for listening, watching, all that kind of fun stuff. I know that, uh, you know, a, a pug is really having a pug in the show is very disappointing. I said I look way too relaxed. Um, my beer <laughs> drinking is sort of hampered because I can't reach. Not to mention, I took one last hit of my glass there and had pug hair in my mouth. So <laughs> that, I got to awesome. say, that is the least tasty thing. So, Alan, our final word on all of these on this beer today. The yeah, it's it's really good. Drink it. <laughs> yep. Drink, it. Drink, Drink it. it. Drink it. Drink it. Drink it. If you don't, you're weird. But on that note, <laughs> Alan, please take us out. <laughs>